Hey everyone, it's Miss Dark Chigo here, and today we are going to be reviewing a different movie. If you recall, um, you know, the, la the last video or whatever, uh, the last I did a kids movie review on Barney. Well, the the last review I did was on the Flintstones, Holly Rockabye Baby, but that was something that was enjoyable for many generations. I'm gonna today. I'm gonna review this movie called Elmo and Grouchland, which honestly, this movie came out in 1999. And to be fair, I did review this movie uh, on my very first channel back in 2017, and oh god, it was really cringe. Like that review I did back then was really cringe. But I was really younger at the time, so this I am going to be doing is a better, much better, proper review of this film. So this film came out in 1999. Some of you guys remember, you know, it was around the 90s era, you know, around the time where, you know, you see stuff like, um, you know, Barney and Friends being good and Barney's Great Adventure. This film came out in 1999. And honestly, I did have this, I do have this on VHS and I still do. I still have this movie on VHS and Surprisingly, there's not really many reviews on Elmo and Grouchland. I mean, there are, you know, I did research on YouTube a little bit to see if anybody else has reviewed this movie because I honestly, it's a really good childhood movie, especially if you're a Sesame Street fan. I mean, I like the old Sesame Street um episodes, like the ones from like, you know, the way the day it started to I guess in 2010 it started to go down it's not really as good in my opinion I think since 2010 it's not really as good as the other one but at this but as the older episodes but when I re looked up Elmo Grouchland review I mean there are a couple people that did reviews for them like there's like a couple of them the one I could definitely really say was um, the best one I have to say was from Jamboriki. He actually reviewed that movie really well made. I mean, I really recommend go check out Jamboriki. He makes pretty good, um, pretty good films. Well, pretty good move videos, actually. And there are a couple reviews, but not really many people reviewed or go too much. Not really many people reviewed this film, but I mean, there is a couple people who have reviewed it, but not really so many people have reviewed it, actually. So, basically, now you're going to get me, you know, basically, I will pretty much review this film. And what I'm going to do is uh, explain what the plot of the movie is about for any of you guys who have not seen this film in a really long time. I mean, I recently watched it because I have it on DVD, but I have it on VHS tape as well. And this is about Elmo, who is the... You know, you, well, everyone knows who Elmo is. I've never met a person who does not know who Elmo is. But, I mean, Sesame Street has its fair share of making, you know, some good movies. Like, like um, Follow That Bird um, move, Muppet movie. And they had a couple other good special movies and that. And even I'm going to say right now, this is about Elmo going to Grouchland when his um blanket gets... um gets, you know, well, his blanket gets stolen. He goes on a wild goose chase to try to get his blanket. And eventually, his blanket ends up, um, well, he his blanket ends up going to Grouchland, but a villain known as Huxley, who is played by Manti Petekin, actually, actually takes the blanket back to his house, and Elmo has to go to Huxley's house just to get it back. I personally really thought Manti Patikin pretty much played a nailed a really good Huxley because honestly, here's one thing I'm gonna say. He it's like he's like pretty much your average, pretty much almost like your average um villain, you know, villain for movies, especially for something in the '90s. I mean, it's a really good movie. I personally really thought Manti Patikin pretty much nailed really good villain in the movie. And I do remember he was in Criminal Minds at one point. I think he still is in that one, but I can't remember. But that's from what I do remember personally. And we also have Vanessa Williams, who plays as the Queen of Trash. Most of you guys know who she is. Some people call her Miss America or something. But even then, she was in other films 
that I can definitely say were pretty good as well. I personally really thought she was was awesome. So I guess with that being the case and with that being said, I personally thought it was a really nice movie. It's really good for what it is. And, you know, Elmo's going through all these obstacles in the movie. Like, he's, you know, having to go get Huxley. However, he befriends Bug later on because Bug was working with Huxley. But then he somehow starts to have a friendship soft spot for Elmo. So Bug turns against Huxley and he ends up, well, being, well... You could definitely say a, um, well, a hero. So, basically, Huxley, when he has his blanket, he's trying to prevent Elmo from taking his blanket. Like, first he has, you know, the chicken, and then try to get Elmo to get trapped in the tunnel. Then he gets, try to get the queen of trash to trap Elmo in. Elmo's going through all these obstacles just so he can get, you know, his blanket but along the way, because you know how he sounded like Huxley in the beginning of the film when when um Zoe wanted to take um Elmo's blanket and when he and when she doesn't give it back to him, Elmo gets really angry about this and you know he sounds pretty much got Huxley's personality at the beginning of the film, but however though Though later on when he when he's get you know, when he's at the Queen of Trash, he does state, you know, he sounded like Huxley because of the way he was acting. That's when um Elmo realizes um that, you know, you know, he's acting like Huxley. He needs to change his ways and basically, you know, learn from the mistakes that he created. I mean I'm going to be fair. I mean, when I was younger, I wasn't really the best person back then. I was kind of toxic, but I also was having a really a lot of health, like not issues with health, but mentally, because I honestly, I was having a lot of mental issues at the time when I was younger, but I'm doing much better now and I'm not having too many issues or anything. I'm doing a hell of a lot better there than how I was. So there's definitely that. The fact that Elmo actually, you know, ends up learning, you know, that the Queen of Trash did pretty much criticize him for saying he sounds like Huxley and Elmo eventually changes his ways. So at the end, everybody go goes back to Sesame Street is all good. I really do like the fact that we get some other characters like Cookie Monster, Telly, Oscar, etc. And you even get some human characters like Gordon and... um. Maria, I mean, I'm really glad that they they had those characters in well set Elmo and Grouchline because it's it wouldn't be Sesame Street if um if it wasn't called Elmo and Grouchline and didn't have all the characters it wouldn't be called that it'd be called something else. But honestly, I still personally really have to say Elmo having his first movie, honestly, was pretty good. I mean, I would have liked a sequel to this one. I mean, a sequel to it would be quite interesting. You know, maybe Huxley might come back and try to get his revenge or something. You know, if the sequel ever were to exist. Well, I can't say if it will exist because it's been, like, over 20 years. So there's no way that it wouldn't be the case. But Elmo eventually learns how to share his blankets. I mean, here's the thing. Elmo didn't really like sharing. I mean, I can understand if he has a bit of anxiety of, you know, Zoe losing the blanket or something. But at the same time, there was no excuse for Elmo to sit there and act like a brat and basically acted the way Huxley did. So the Queen of Trash criticizing him pretty much was a wake-up call. And honestly, I'm really glad that she did call him out for it, like criticizing him. While I say the songs are pretty good for the movie, I do like the songs that you know, that were in this film. And I do like the fact that, well, I do like that Vanessa Williams was in this film because she did sing the song Colors of the Wind for the Pocahontas movie for the Disney one. I personally like that song. But honestly, I could definitely say Huxley actor, Manti Batikin, he nailed him, the villain, really well. I personally think the villain was pretty cool. He's like pretty much your typical... um. 19, 19, the 1990s villain or anything pretty much. Do I still personally think this movie is pretty good? Yeah. I mean, 
Watching it as a kid, I really liked it. And watching it as an adult, I did have some different points. But I can honestly say, you know, Queen of Trash did criticize Elmo. I didn't understand if she was criticizing him back when I was a kid. But now watching this film again, I can understand there was some key points. Like Elmo pretty much becoming like Huxley 2.0. Although he doesn't even realize it until, you know, the Queen of Trash calls it out and gives him a wake-up call saying, you know, he sounds like Huxley and that he needs to stop. That's basically the Queen of Trash's wake-up call. Honestly, I gotta really give the points out to, well, how really cute Elmo is. I mean, Elmo, I used to have a bunch of Elmo plushies back when I was a kid, so I used to watch this movie back in the day. So, if you're a Sesame Street fan like myself, I highly recommend this movie. You will not be disappointed. It is a really great Sesame Street film. And I gotta say, kids will enjoy this, but also adults will definitely enjoy it. Especially for those who want to go down on memory lane. It is a really good film. It's definitely got really great movies. And it's got great songs. And it's still a pretty good film. Especially for something that was made in 1999. Now, in all due reality, I do know for a fact that this movie does have its flaws, but it's still a pretty good film. Especially for anybody who is, you know, an adult or kid. Anybody can like this movie, and it wouldn't be an issue. However, I can definitely say right now that, honestly, this film was shot over a 30-day period starting at May 26th of 1998. However, though... Though, the thing was, is that that it was then, you know, behind the scenes with Ernie and Bert were shot later in New York City of 1999 with, um, well, you know, some stuff that was in the film. However, what do I personally think? I personally think this one was a pretty good film, and I still think it is. Even though, looking at it when I was, when I'm older, it does have, you know, some really good good expectations for this film and however though this fun this movie is pretty much fun and the moral tale entertains both sesame street watchers and you know seasoned veterans however though i could definitely say there is a mix of average reviews and however when this movie was only the family film to be playing in most theaters of the time when it's released sony had planned a scaled back release making it difficult to make its money back the film opened number eight of the eight, a weekend gross of gross of a certain amount of I think three million dollars from a uh, thousand and two hundred and ten feet years. So yeah, that was definitely something. It is currently the lowest grossing Muppet film to date because we all know a lot of Muppet movies and stuff. So this film was definitely a pretty good one, and I do recommend it for anybody who is a Sesame Street fan. And do I recommend this film? Yeah. I recommend this film to anybody who is a Sesame Street fan. And you will not be disappointed. Because honestly, this is honestly one of the best Sesame Street films. However, there is, you know, a couple video games for it. Such as, well, Game Boy Color and stuff like that. So, I really have no idea if this will ever get like an Xbox game. Probably not. But we all really have to say that, you know... When it comes to anything made with, with Sesame Street or Muppets, we always know for a fact that I've we always going to come across this film. And I personally recommend it to anybody who is a fan of Muppets like myself and um, Sesame Street. And yes, if you want to go trip, take a trip down memory lane, then I highly recommend this one. You will not be disappointed. It is a pretty good movie. It is really awesome. And I got to say, it's pretty fun. It's a pretty fun movie, and I do got to say right now that if you guys are, um, you know, Muppet fans like myself, I highly recommend this movie. So, Muppet, so as for Elmo and Gratulin, I'm going to give it about 9 out of 10 stars. It's a great movie, it's got a good plot, although it does teach the moral of the story, which basically is about learning how to share, which Elmo did have a difficulty with. The only thing I did not like about this movie was the way how Elmo acted. Like, I mean, I don't even know if Elmo has, you know, some issues or something. I don't know if it was his anxiety when he, um, 
gave the blanket to Zoe or if he just had um, some sort of habit or I don't know if he had mental issues in this movie because it never states if Elmo had any disabilities or not. But if you guys do happen to know, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I guess that's just pretty much all I have to really say, but if I'm missing anything about this movie, let me know in the comments below. And yes, there are clips of this on YouTube, so you guys can go look it up if you want to go, you know, watch some of it. I think you can also watch the full movie on here. I can't remember. But anyways, with that being said and that being the case, that's pretty much all I have to really say. The songs are pretty good. I really do think this film is enjoyable. Kids would love this movie, and adults would definitely like this movie as well, especially for those who were Sesame Street fans, and still are. So, yeah, do I, and that's all I have to really say. So, yeah, if what do you guys think of this movie? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I am Miss Dark Shigo. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and if you're new to my channel, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Ring the bell for notifications to when I upload. So that way you guys will not miss an upload. And if you guys want to go subscribe to my main account called main channel called The Lion Queen, be sure you do that as well. Also, if I'm missing anything about this movie, because I think I covered it all, but if I'm missing something, please let me know what it is in the comments below. So I'll see you guys all in the next video. And like always, I'll see you all next time.